number one trade now by ID. The flight from Baker is insane. Do you see against the free hit? And IG are separated. Torn. Baker can't get through, but blitz through the sustain. Over the wall. It's Jackie Two. And for the first time in 1,176 days, TSM's Nexus will fall to CLG. Welcome everyone to another episode of Esports in 30. I'm Lisa Duan, this is Matt Hempstead, and the LTS action is back after that kind of bizarre NA versus EU yeah. Rift Rivals, but let's not go into that no, one. Not Matt, about. what's the story from this past weekend? Well, I mean, first of all, there's a lot going on in the LCS because, you know, we saw substitutions in place, some wanted and some not wanted because of injury issues, so we're going to dive into that. And of course, over in the East, there was, you know, China, Korea, Vietnam, Taiwan taking wow. part in the other Rift Rivals version, and it was, Rivals. guess what? It was actually competitive. Oh my god, it was entertaining. Oh my god. Who, who thought it would actually be entertaining, right? Wow. Because it sure wasn't in the NAEU version. Wow, so that was, uh, I was very excited to watch. So if you'd missed it, check out some of the highlights because it was actually pretty sweet. Well, speaking of, let's check out what a Rift Rivals tournament should look like, shall we? Here are some highlights from the epic showdown between China and Korea. And that's the one-for-one one trade now for ID. The flight from Baker is insane. The Azir gets the free hit. And IG are separated. Torn. Baker can't get through, but blitz through the sustain. Over the wall. It's Jackie Two. That outplay was possible. As Whoa. a rookie, he's going to go down to death though. Tucson goes into his stopwatch. The shine wants to find it underneath the turret. Oh, Can it be the double? Kill, no death, able to create the space, too easy. A nice fight, oh, right. oh, See you later, buddy. I have a feeling we're just waiting for an Aatrox and we ask. There we go, no more Aatrox and now no more Bow Lamb. The Shy falls down as well. Kingstone Dragon X march forward, comes down to 300. The Shy eviscerated before wow. anything can happen. And now the ultimate from Rascal, the ace from Kingzone, and that will be game number one. Fates call comes down. There we go, Pop Blossom on the two people. Baker starting off the fight. He may just end it as well. And he'll now need to teleport to get back forward. Baker finds no. three with the Pop Blossom out of absolutely nowhere. Final chapter is in though. Top able to answer one back. As this is not over yet. Logan over the wall, but into the open arms of the Itsy Bitsy Spider, who's not so Itsy Bitsy right now. Double kill. SKT and the LCK are going to go up 2-0. The man drop is coming in, the dragon is stolen, but now the fight may also go the same way. The Pantheon grabs the first blood, Viper is well and truly dead. The man drop coming in once again, Tarzan able to get out of the way, but Doiby so far forward, the cask is good, and that is two real easy kills. It gets so scary, Lahens moving quickly, really, uh... as the ultimate once again gonna oh go wide, as, oh they still go in, LWX not even going low just yet, as the Guardian Angel is popped so quickly, and FPX are just too far ahead, they've got too much damage, and they will be keeping the LPL alive in this best of five. Yeah, might be off to the side, Scan of the Week doesn't land, is there the ultimate? Yes! The Rush in the bomb and pulverize from Feral Canyon, the Requiem! And Zoom is gonna survive for the moment. How to lane 1v1. And also how to deliver okay. kills is there, oh another God. one. Nuclear flashing forward, that was so sick. Gets out of the way of the CC, flawless. See your Ooh. death. Not able to get the calculation as flawless does get the knockup. The nuclear does have it, and there's another one. Double pull comes in for Feral. Securing that MVP like nobody's business. Nexus one is gonna go down. Oh. It is 2019 get now. Out. Get out. It is not 2018. Don't let him. And this is Dom One Gaming and LCK 3-1 victory. Rip Rivals. After losing the first two Rift Rivals events to the LPL, Korea finally picked up their first. And to help it break it all down, we got Caster Opal joining us. How's it going? Uh, it's pretty good. You know, it's just a little bit late over here in Shanghai at the Fun Plus office, but we don't really go to bed anytime soon, so it's, it's good to be here. I appreciate the grind, and I love the, you're repping the, the brand right there behind your chair. It looks awesome. 
Yeah, if I don't wear that into the office, then we get in trouble. So uh, <laughs> you, you can't wear any other teams or else, you know, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a penalty on your record right there. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, we have a lot to break down because yes. the event was intense between China and Korea. So, you know, in recent years, we've seen China emerge and really push Korea for the title as the best region in the world. But at Rift Rivals, Korea was very dominant. So do you feel like this tournament is enough to make you believe that Korea is currently playing the highest level of League of Legends in the world? Uh, you know, possibly on patch 9.13. And unfortunately, that's the only tournament running it at the moment, uh, because here in China, actually, they're still only playing on 9.11. Mm. Uh, so they play about almost a month's difference in balancing coming into Rift Rivals. We still don't actually have 9.13 actually live. You can actually play it here in China. I think it just got updated today. So, you know, as far as the format goes too, there isn't there isn't a whole lot of, you know, back and forth with the teams. You know, they, the teams only played three or two games apiece. Mm -hmm. uh, sure, the regions as a whole did, but I, I still think there's still a little bit more time before we really see what's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a pretty big disadvantage if you can't even play yeah. on the patch. But before we get into some of the, the matches individually, this event was so much better than the EU NA version. I'm not sure if you caught it, but it was kind of a, a fiesta. <laughs> so, so why did the teams take it so much more seriously in the East? Because it was actually very entertaining and competitive. Well, you know, you know how the meme is for Rift Rivals as far as NA and EU goes. It's it's a four fun tournament, yes. uh, and especially because it's such a minor prize pool. I don't even actually know if they announced the the real prize pool this time around. Mm -hmm. If it's anything like last year, it's only about ten thousand dollars if you're in the winning region. Wow. For NA and EU, you know, your base cast or your base, uh, you know, player salary that that's well over a hundred thousand. So it isn't a whole lot when you split that apart between the team and the organization. On top of that, too, you know, some teams just take it as a break meanwhile over here though it is very much you're fighting for representing your region and even players that are say from korea playing in the lpl uh take example doonby during his interview after that game three in the final he literally streamed out in korea for the lpl to you know come on get ready and for J uh, jin dong gaming to actually just like you know get them hype mm -hmm. that takes a lot of guts to do that in korea as a korean player right Right. It's like so competitive, uh, this tournament, but then we see on NA and EU, it's not that competitive. Not so I wanted to like pick your brain, like how do we bring that same kind of mentality over to the West? Uh, you know, it depends, like, if it's ever going to be another Rift Rivals, which, mm. you know, apparently there might not be because uh, Atlas on day one actually said that was the last Rift Rivals for Asia uh, mm. on the broadcast. So I'm not exactly sure what they plan on doing. There has to be a reason to play. There has to be a, a good enough reason to actually try. There has to be an impact somewhere when it comes to Worlds or, you know, a bigger prize pool. But then again, it's still, you know, a bit in, up, up in the air. It can also, you know, relate more to just how the, the old, tournament is treated by both the players and I guess maybe the broadcast itself because over here in uh, Asia you know it's a lot about that narrative it's a lot about that region uh, the region rivalry you know NA and EU they like to have fun so yeah, again there's there's some things that can change but I don't know we're just a bunch of memesters basically <laughs> that's essentially what it is and it kind of shows when they get together for worlds uh, but anyways the strongest team in China is no longer the world champions in Victus Gaming instead it definitely looks like it's fun plus Phoenix the guys you're repping and they won the only game in the best of five against Korea so yes the LCK won this event but could you make the case that uh, FPX is actually the strongest team right now uh, you know, especially based on just the tournament format, I don't think it's, you know, safe to say exactly that they were the best team yeah. at the event. Uh, on top of that, too, you know, I am an FPX fan, as you can <laughs> clearly see. Uh, but I'll be frank, as far as the LPL goes, like, they've only, you know, faced bottom tier teams as far as the scheduling goes. Uh, their last five to six matches are actually going to be facing six out of the eight teams that are below them mm. as far as the ranking goes. So they're still a lot of them a lot for them to prove um especially you know considering they they haven't faced you know super strong teams other than royal uh, rng right you're so fair you're so fair that's, <laughs> that's really bold i love it how yeah. he's saying that even with fun plus in the back there uh we gotta talk about the match with griffin because fun plus phoenix beat griffin and it was very convincing yes. so griffin already has a history as we know of struggling when it really the pressure is on uh do you think this loss was a case of maybe their big stage like fright to their struggles 
Oh, you know, I think it got a little bit too in the draft there because that was very much an FPX draft. Uh, Doombi, he brought out Pantheon mid. <laughs> Doombi, he's he's played 13 unique champions, I think, in summer already, which is absolutely insane. I think he's closing in on 30 as far as the year goes. Um, on top of that, they actually played more of a style that they were more accustomed to. Uh, if you look back at some of the interviews that they mentioned during uh, day one of the event, they mentioned, hey, our draft wasn't that good. They picked Corky and, you know, in the off if we see Corky get locked in, we go back to work because there's a solid chance that we have to, you know, it's a game that we're going to lose. Uh, as far as Griffin goes, though, you know, they only played three games in total and only two of them were against the LPL representatives. So I think there's still a little bit more time there because especially, you know, they won the other game as well. So and they went against FPX, which is considered the strongest LPL team. So I think I don't know if it's necessarily them choking at that point. Okay. Fair enough. Fair, fair. Ironically, you know, Griffin's no stranger to the Pantheon either, so it's pretty <laughs> funny that it came out against them. Um, but the team that eventually <laughs> closed it out for Korea was Damwon Gaming, probably not what everyone expected, and they did it against JDG. Uh, I want you to talk to us about this final game because on your Twitter you were tweeting out that it looked like JDG were kind of trolling <laughs> along the way. Yeah, you know, for Jin Dong, it looked really good in the beginning. You know, Imp got a first blood. He got another kill in lane, and it looked super awesome. We were like, okay, cool. This is Jin Dong. This is how they win their games. Uh, and then uh, they tried to do these really messy team fights. And uh, Flawless, you know, his he had an okay tournament at times, but this last game, it really showed. There's a lot of times, especially during, right before that giant Alistar combo that came out of Barrel, uh, he ended up missing like two flag drags that if they actually hit that, that fight would have never happened. And then they decided to really commit onto this Alistar, and then, you know, he made an insane play just flashing into four members because he has a cleanse on his ultimate. So I, I think there was a, I think there was a lot of disconnect when it came to Jin Dong. They, they were playing all right. Um, but like, especially when it came to the team fights, it just wasn't pretty. Oh, well, let's talk about this team a bit more because like JDG are currently three and three in the LPL, mm -hmm. and there are several teams above them in the standings. Um, if you had to, you know, the choice to replace them, who would you have liked to see actually in their place? Well, you know, a lot of people they're gonna say like RNG, Royal Never Give Up. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind actually seeing like Li Ning. Uh, that's former Snake Esports because uh -huh. you know what? I'm kind of excited about Snake or Li Ning at this point. They're uh, they're still in the definitely not Snake pit uh, at their home <laughs> arena. It still has like all the old Snake branding, uh, but they've been playing very aggressive and a bit, a bit exciting, which mm. is which is really good to see from this team. The only issue is we never get to see them at international tournaments because they usually just can't perform in playoffs. So mm -hmm. maybe they can change that here. Summer. That'd be really interesting. Yeah. You always want to see these teams compete against some of the top competition, especially against Korea. Yeah. It'd be great to see an even bigger Rift Travels, but of course, that's not going to happen. <laughs> um, but it'd be criminal not to talk about Faker after the tournament that he had because, I mean, I know they lost against IG, but he really kept them alive in that game. And yes, SKT has a star studded roster, but where do you think this team would be without Faker's ability to make some of these incredible game changing plays? Uh, they'd possibly be further down the LCK, uh, LCK standings at this point because uh, there was a lot of times during that, especially that IG game, where if Faker didn't have an impact, the team did nothing. Uh, there was that insane flank teleport that came out from him that was able to really turn around the siege that was coming into their base from IG. Uh, but I think the biggest indicator was that last team fight at Elder Drake is Faker, he stuck in the pit. He ended up going over the wall with his combo for the for the shuffle. Uh, and then he tried to focus down the jungle. Meanwhile, you know, Jackie Love, Rookie, they're all still freely damaging your team. Uh, and there was also another time where he tried to really clean up a fight around Baron after his team actually already lost the fight you know unless he's not able to make those hero plays the team doesn't perform well it saw from what we saw here at Rift Rivals so yes it was a bit of awakening from Faker but he's gonna have to keep up the pace if they want to bring that over into summer for sure wow Faker is really carrying <laughs> the team on <laughs> his back new, right? uh, uh, let's talk about Kingzone now because Kingzone's kind of a hard team to kind of understand yeah uh, their mid laner was on possibly the worst EU team of all time <laughs> I don't want to say it but you know uh, now <laughs> he beat Invictus uh, in gaming at Rift Rivals so how has Nahan made his like this turnaround in his career well, like you said, he didn't have the best debut. He, he was on Origin, yeah. where I think, I believe, yeah. like they had 15 <laughs> unique players during summer and a decent chunk of them were either fresh rookie players or ex peque on ADC, and we all know how that went. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, yeah. And like you said, turning around his career, well, you know, Korea, if he just went back home to Korea like he did, uh, he took that development year and then came back. And another thing too is he's, 
doing his job in mid lane. He's not necessarily dominating matchups. If you look at like his CS difference, he's often behind by just a little bit, but especially during their series uh, with Kingzone, uh, honestly, he was just holding his own. He wasn't costing his team anything, and when it came to the fights, he was doing his job. Yeah. Um, and Invictus Gaming, they got Rookie back for Rift Travel, which is a huge news for them. Forge is going back to the, the lower division. Uh, do you think their loss to Kingzone could be potentially attributed to a lack of playing time with, with Rookie? Because he's been out for a couple weeks, and they got pretty used to playing with Forge. Yeah, you know, I, I think anytime Invictus currently have an issue, it isn't really their mid lane. Because like you mentioned, Forge here in the LPL, he's been able to hold his own. If anything, yeah. I think IG have actually lost more games with Rookie than they did with Forge so far. Uh, so when he comes back, he's going to have to be sure to keep up the pace there. Uh, but especially, I think it's more or less there's some draft issues. There's sometimes also morale issues too, like with Fallon at the beginning of the season, where uh, of the split actually here in summer, where he... It's been rumored that he benched himself. Luke came mm. in, uh, and Luke didn't have that great of performance. Like, he held his own, but he, he was outclassed by a lot of the bot lanes that we did see. Uh, on top of that, too, there's also kind of, I call it the Ning problem. If you <laughs> think back to Worlds last year, there's group stage Ning, which doesn't do a whole lot. And then there's, like, finals Ning, where he's popping off and carrying the right. team. So there's a bit of inconsistency in some of the roles. Uh, and I think there's just, you know, a little bit of confusion going on in that camp because uh, mm -hmm. else, elsewise, it just doesn't make sense for Invictus right now to be sitting around eighth place on that playoff bubble. Right, yeah. right. You know, I have one big picture question for you. So obviously the LPL, ever since they won Worlds, the pressure has been on yeah. them for like meeting that standard again, but we see an MSI and now we see a Rift Rivals that they kind of are not pulling it off. So as a region, like how is the atmosphere? What do you guys, how do you guys feel with the fact that recently the international performance hasn't been that good well honestly like it's it's always just fun and it okay. depends on which kind of play style that the LPL brings into these tournaments because uh, we kind of saw it especially during this one you saw a lot more of that Korean play that we're like accustomed to back a couple seasons ago it wasn't as fast mm -hmm. uh, the only time that we saw that fast play was usually from FPX or you know Jin Dong when they were trying to pull something out of a hat and see if they got anything in that final game that's that's when they go a little bit too messy there um again honestly it's not until we start to see you know a proper group stage again with a playoff yeah. as well with like you know groups that we can really say you know exactly which region is the strongest or what we expect of them i think once we start to see the representatives heading into worlds you know i'm excited i really hope i can see doing at worlds uh for fpx because he kind of broke the curse like they were the only lpl team to win during the grand final and it was one hell of a way to do it so if i could see him at worlds you know i think LPL has a pretty good chance, but you know what? It's really good to see some of the Western regions like EU step up to the plate. So I think we're in for a really good world championship this season. I love it. He's already hyping up worlds for us. Yeah. It's exciting. Right. And um, this is relevant. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Well, well, thank you so much. We appreciate you for catching us up on a Rift Rivals event that was actually competitive. Thanks for joining us today. No problem. You guys have a wonderful day. Thank you. So while Rift Rivals was happening in Korea, the LCS picked up where they left off. So let's check out some highlights from week five. Ooh. Will he get caught out of the queue? There's a stun. There's the cage. They're going to have a lot of damage. Niski on the board against Xfinity. The zap comes in. Big fight right here, finds the spot. Uh -oh. Jensen walks into it, do they have the damage? Oh my word, he does. No spike to fight against, this is gonna be completely TL. as long as, oh, Kubo picks Xmenthi, Vagar can do no wrong. Niski gets another oh kill. God. He's on a rampage, and the chase, Kubo steps up huge. And the full lethality level 16, Jace is going in. Oh, double now gone as well. The cage's up for another, Cloud9 are unrelenting. Cloud9 will knock down the number one team with a new top laner. Kuma looks amazing. Pushing in. Final chapter is just going to miss. Arrow's out of range, but he's walking into it. But he dodges the Glacial Prison as well. So much left and right. The comedy doesn't die. And the fight back onto GGS is going well in the way of Optic. Oh. Stopwatch for Doka stays there. Oh. Last forward and not even three want to take on Arrow inside the base. Just behind him is Crown, and they are ready to go to town on the Nexus. That's the hook coming in. They take down contracts. They're signing off on this one, baby, as Optic are going to tie the top of the table with a win over Golden. Guardians. Has to 
flash away, keeping himself alive. Double is now trying to get That's back to eat the tier one turret. Aphromu taken very low, and it's a double kill for double lift. There's the crescendo, there's the sleepy trouble, and there's the oh, triple oh. for double. Team Liquid seeing if maybe there's something to be found, but Dylan's gonna die here on the back end of the fight. Ryu's able to find the flank, and Team Liquid has found disaster! But they redouble their efforts. Oh, we're not time. done yet! Here goes Amazing! There goes Amazing! There goes Team Liquid! And 100 teams are in some trouble! He's gonna find the knockup. Xfinity coming back out right in the fight. After who's gonna be taken down. Very low fake on, almost dead now, gonna be bursted out. Jensen goes on a killing spree, and TL is still looking pretty good. Afro in the middle of multiple people, he's gonna be taken down by Impact. Team Liquid are slamming 100 Thieves into the ground. They'll take down the Nexus turret, and the valiant efforts of 100 Thieves end here. Erickson's headed down too. This is a four-person TSMRO. Here we go. Smoothie going in. Sticks in, keeping himself alive for now. Bio trying to keep him alive. Sven's going to be outplayed and taken down. We're into a 1v1. Oh, uh, meanwhile, that 1v1 is going to turn into a solo kill for Wiggly. He tries to get away from Acadian, turning it right back around, able to find some vamp. The King Slayer. It's Jamie Lannister, baby. Wiggly's going right back in after Acadian. Power of evil. And Wiggly tries to go in now. Defensively, it's two slicing maelstroms. It's Sven cut down and Broken Blade on the run. TSM can't get anything from this one. And for the first time in 1,176 days, TSM's Nexus will fall to CLG. The LCS is back, but things are definitely not the no. way we left it. Uh, Matt, let's start by taking a look at the standings because the biggest standout is CLG is tied for first? What in the world? Explain this to me. Not only are they tied for first, they also beat TSM for the first time in over three years, which is absolutely ridiculous. One of the longest losing streaks to a particular team in the history of League of Legends, if not the longest. And it's just oh wild to see that they actually, you know, overcame that demon. It's been so long. Styx is the only player who's actually, you know, remaining from the roster that beat them all that time ago. So huge uh, shout to them. And honestly, I want to give big props to Wiggly because he popped off on his jungle Silas. And from spring to summer, the turnaround is almost like largely because of just his growth and his improvement yeah. with the main roster. And it's great to see a young player like that step up and people are calling him the best jungler in North America now. That might be a bit premature. Probably a bit premature. <laughs> we like to jump to conclusions in the West, apparently. Yeah, yeah, of course. But the real reason why they won is because Weldon Green, one of their coaches, channeled Keanu Reeves and wore the exact same outfit he did at E3. So, you know, people who are into Keanu and all that dead garbage. Why does that's he what always come up in conversation? I don't know. I'm sports. sick of it, to be honest with you. But, you know, for CLG, just... <laughs> The hot, we're gonna get roasted for that. But it's I know. Sh I'm over it. But um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's why it, you know everyone's saying, "Oh, Keanu, yeah. he won." Uh, so they did really well. But is yeah. this too early to start changing my flare back to CLG? Because I need to know. Honestly, what, if your if your flare is still 100 thieves, it's never too early. You need to change it right <laughs> wow. now. Okay, go back to CLG. It's okay. It's to actually Origin do. from 2015. I have that flare in the Okay, well that, that was a good too. year. That was a good year. But good since year. then, well, they're good, they're good again now. But it's fine. Uh, no, I don't think it's too early. I mean, okay. they're seven and three. It's not like they're like two and zero or anything anymore, right? They've shown time and time again that they can actually perform. They've beaten Team Liquid. They've beaten TSM. So right. this is these are big wins, right? They're not just blanket wins. And after the first round robin stage, they're looking pretty damn good. So I, honestly, I'm not saying to jump on the bandwagon, but <gasps> careful, Faith age. careful. Faith, Faith CLG age is back has hope era. again. What is this? I was a we were huge CLG yeah, fans. I was big in this so this too. is the time. Uh, let's move over and talk about another team that is tied for first place. Yes. Uh, they had an interesting week though. Uh, Licorice was out with an injury, yeah. and so C9 had to replace him with Kumo. That's right. So how did he look in his first week? Honestly, really good. Uh, they give him Jace both games, which I guess is one of his comfort picks. And against uh, Team Liquid, which they to beat Team Liquid is a huge upset. Yeah. Uh, he popped up against Impact and actually had a pretty big uh, lane, just or lead in lane on his own, mm -hmm. which is already a big deal, right? Because Impact's considered one of the best top laners in North America. So for Kumo to come in and do that, and also just have some pretty big outplays on his own, yeah. uh, shows that he does have mechanics uh, and ability to step in for Licorice when he needs to. And honestly, mm -hmm. it's, it's a big deal, right? Because anytime you have someone on your academy team who has the potential to be a starting member in the LCS is huge. Even if something happens to Licorice, like this first thing lingers, yeah. all of a sudden you're pretty much still okay because you've got 
Kumo sitting on the bench. But Matt, okay, when a player plays the same champion twice in a week, it makes me think, is he just the one trick? I know, it's concerning. Right? So we have to, like, did he fit in well with the team overall, or was it just really the pick that got the wins for them? I think it's still it's still okay for him. I mean, honestly, okay. giving him the comfort pick uh, is a good idea because coming out of Rift Rivals, they were with Licorice. So they probably didn't have too much time right. to actually incorporate him into the main roster. But again, I don't think they would just give him that uh, alone. I mean, C9 is known for being a bit more creative in draft and True. doing things. I don't think that Kumo on Academy is limited to just Jace. Right. It might be more comfortable for him, but I don't think they would just be like, you know what, you like Jace? We'll just destroy our own draft to give you that character, right? <laughs> right, that's fair. that's fair. We'll have to see maybe next week if he's still playing Jace, then questions. Let's talk about Licorice for a bit, though, because you know wrist injuries are huge in esports, and it's so sad to hear that he's out with an injury. Um, how do you take this news? Like, how do you feel about it? I mean, it's like every week now we hear about a new guy yeah. going out with a wrist injury. We've, we've seen so many League of Legends players in the past, not just League 2, but like time over time we see these guys go out and they practice so much every week every year playing for this game if you take mm -hmm. time off it's detrimental to you because you got to keep up the mechanics you got to keep up that level of play so it's just it's hard to hear yeah. um, but I think in his announcement he said he was out for week five mm -hmm. we don't know if it's gonna go past that hopefully not yeah. but I think now that with Kumo being able to step in it gives him a little bit more flexibility to be like yeah. you know what if he's actually hurt we're not going to lose too much by putting in Kumo here, right? Which is which is great for them. Um, so at least that gives them some options. It doesn't have to force Licorice back into the lineup. But yeah, something needs to happen with these wrist injuries uh, so that players have you know a bit more time. Because you know, obviously you grind nonstop yeah. with these wrists, and it's become serious now. At, the, at first it was a meme, right? Haha, -ha, they're jerking off. Haha. -ha. Um, but now, <laughs> but now it's actually like a serious thing where you know it's people need to take breaks to protect their their wrists. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I actually read his uh, Twit Longer because obviously every pro goes to Twit Longer yes. to write. About these things he said that he was he's always had wrist injuries but when wrist rivals came along like they told him to play and he was already having issues with it but he decided yeah. to play anyways and this is what happens now he's out for a week and could potentially root, like hurt his career right in the long exactly. term so it makes me wonder like as a infrastructure as an esport like they have to put in things to prevent these things right yeah. it's really sad um let's move on to another team because we got to talk about golden guardians mm. um they made some moves starting with fbi and our boy who he i love who he in the bot lane okay so that's the big surprise there the yeah, kicker yeah. um how do you feel like this makeover went for them i mean it, it had mixed results they went yeah. one and one which is fine i think who he to support makes a lot of sense because you know even when he was playing mid he was still a supportive mid laner right and that was his entire thing he would roam to other lanes and try to get them ahead and sacrifice his own uh lane right, right. he would give away some of his cs to get someone else ahead yeah and now he doesn't have to do that he can just do that from the do support that. position right <laughs> i mean it, it kind of works the same way if he leaves the mid lane, or mm. if he leaves bot lane, sorry, I can't get over that his support. Um, then all of a sudden he kind of puts FBI in a tough spot. And we saw yeah. it sometimes he would fall behind in CS, mm. um, but he would still help other people get ahead. And he honestly looked really good on Lux. One game he popped off and got them ahead and got FBI a big lead, 7-1-13 on Callista. So obviously, even FBI is showing a bit of care potential. Yeah. Just get these guys some more time, get them integrated with the full team. And I think it's a good move by the Golden Guardians because they had lost, they were on a, a mini losing streak going yeah. into this week. Um, so mix it up. But it's like almost, what, it's week five? So like, is this too late to kind of implement this change or is maybe this the perfect time to do it? I think it was an appropriate time. And the reason right. why is because Rift Rivals happened, right? Yeah. So Golden Guardians then had an extra week to kind of practice if they wanted to make this move. Um, otherwise it would have been a little just abrupt, I think. But you know, you have time to evaluate after week four, we're a little struggling and they obviously put the blame on the bot lane mostly. So mm -hmm. now you have two weeks to practice with the new bot lane of FBI and who he sure. try to get them ready for week five. And it, it worked out okay. Of course, their only win was against Echo Fox. Do we really count that as a win? I'm I'm not sure. Um, but <laughs> You're gonna take all you can get, guys. <laughs> yeah, take it. So for you sure. Take it. We'll see. Yeah. Um, now we gotta talk about Team Liquid because they Ooh. almost went 0 2, but luckily survived an encounter with 100 wheelchairs. <laughs> That's like, <laughs> you guys gotta watch the clip if you haven't. They yeah. uh, Double Lift called them 100 wheelchairs. Uh, so, what did Team Liquid do to keep their share of first place? First of all, it's because they're old. It's oh, because they're okay. old. Not any other reason, okay? Ch no other relax. reason. It's, it's just because they're old. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, honestly, a lot of it goes to 100 Thieves not being able to take advantage because they had a decent lead going on, and then it was Amazing, mm. uh, who gets a lot of the blame here. Not just from me, but he also blamed himself on Twitter, being like he was Giga Inting or something like that. Giga Inting, uh, that's a new... Might have been Mega, I don't know. Mega Giga <laughs> It keeps major. evolving, yeah, it keeps getting worse. <laughs> um, but yeah, he was just... They, they lost one of the fights near uh, the Team Liquid base. It didn't go that poorly, and then they were backing away. He engaged into like a blind bush and kind of lost a whole bunch of stuff for them. And there were other misengages with his Gragas uh, throughout the event, or the, throughout the game. So yeah. he needs to step it up, and he took it. He took um, you know blame on himself, True. which I appreciate. Okay. You're not going to be like, you know what? We kind of lost fault, that game. Like... This was like, look, that one's on me. Yeah. Um, but Team Liquid, yeah. I mean, I'm sure they're going to be like, oh, we just played Rift Rivals. Oh, no, but C9 did too.
True. So they went 2-0, no excuses. They got to pick it up. They looked a little rusty, which is weird. Maybe yeah. it was, you know, Rift Rivals throwing them off. I, who knows Friggin what it was. knows at this point. They're maybe all some over sort of the place. Excuse. Yeah. But they're still doing well. Luckily, still tied for first. True. So let's give them some credit there. Yes. But it's time now for you to pick your player of the week. So we have oh, Rift wow. Rivals and LCS to pick from. Who are you choosing? I'm going to give it to Kumo. Because, again, okay. it, was a, it was a tough situation for him, right? I mean, you're stepping in for the best top laner in North America, which a lot of people are saying Licorice is. And he came in with Jace and kind of took it to impact and then survived the laning phase against uh, Huni in that game against Clutch. So I'm, I'm pretty impressed with what he brought to the table. Yes, Lisa, it was with two games on Jace. I just got to call it out. Yeah, hey, I respect that. But, <laughs> I mean, even if he had two games on Jace, he kind of popped up on both. That's true. So, you know, you can't really say... Two games on Jace, oh no. Right, 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 um, right. But yeah, Kumo, big ups to him for stepping in on C9 and giving them a 2-0 week. A lot of people would have been like, you know what, Cloud9 doesn't have their starting top laner, it's going to be ugly. But no, Kumo didn't take that to the heart exactly. and he came out with a 2-0 week, so very impressed by him and uh, we'll see what C9 has going forward. But at least now they've got two quality LCS top laners to look forward to. That's exciting, we'll see. that's exciting. Well guys, that's all we got for you today in Esports in 30. Thank you to Opal for joining us and chatting about Rift Rivals. Tomorrow we are chatting about the Overwatch League and the Atlanta Rain Homestand. So until then, hit us up on all our socials at Squad State. We'll see you next time.